So instead, I'm going to talk about the hunt for the elusive fungus gnat in Australia. Uh, I'm from Australia and uh, I'm on a tour um, from Singapore, going overland, visiting make spaces, etc., uh, all the way through to Shenzhen, China, spending uh, five weeks or so doing that. So anyway, uh, real quickly, um, so Australia has, this is a much longer talk, and I'm going to condense it down, so we'll just skip some slides. Uh, Australia has a lot of uh, interesting orchids, and uh, whilst most people focus on the orchids themselves, uh, what's interesting is the pollinators of the orchids, because that is how the uh, orchid, or uh, well, usually how the orchid um, uh, reproduces. So here on the left, we've got a, a wasp, and another much larger, uh, this, this wasp's only maybe a millimeter or two long, whereas that one there is quite a bit larger. And you can see this one's maybe 20 millimeters or so longer, and it's sitting on my finger. These don't uh, sting. So uh, we'll just skip that. So um, while I was doing all that trekking, uh, the, the path there, I came across this log here, and this is raised up, and it's about uh, two meters long. And in there is a bed of about um, 60 um, helmet orchids. So this is a very tiny orchid. And uh, this is one of the targets that I'm looking at. Oh, sorry, I forgot to t mention, uh, no one knows what pollinates this orchid. No one knows what kind of insect it is. So I thought I'd go out and try and discover what pollinates the, the flower. And uh, so the leaf here, the big round leaf, is about 20 millimetres, maybe 10 millimetres in diameter, the, the opening there. So this is the opening. Uh, this is a side view, and this is a bit of a top down, and there's the entrance there. There's another species. So this one flowers for about uh, three weeks uh, in the middle of winter. And there's another one that uh, flowers uh, at the end. There's a bit of an overlap between them. Um, this one's for about a week or two. And this is a side view of the orchid uh, the flower, and it is uh, a little bit smaller. So the first thing we tried, uh, this is a multi-year project. Uh, the first thing we tried was nice and simple, just build some traps. Um, this one was a, a, a failure. Uh, this one was a little bit better, and it was just a drink container, top cut off, uh, upended and put inside, so act like an upward facing tunnel, a funnel, and hopefully the insect would uh, visit the flower and then go up inside and then get trapped and not be able to come back. We captured a few insects that way, but uh, it wasn't, wasn't very good. So um, we moved on to another idea that I had, uh, and that was to cut out some overhead projection uh, plastic into make little flags, put them on bamboo skewers or metal skewers. And uh, there's a special substance you can buy called Tanglefoot, and you can paint, paint uh, that onto the flag, or like it looks like a flag, and then the insects flying around stick into it and they, they're trapped. Um, and you can see the orchids down here um, at the bottom. Um, so there's lots of target areas for them to fly around in. Um, there were a few problems with that in that uh, not planning ahead, um, got them out in the field. How do you collect them and take them home when you've got all these sticky bits? And the first year we actually coated both, or the first session, we coated both sides with sticky stuff. So luckily we uh, brought some Glad wrap back with us and we wrapped them in Glad wrap, but then we had problems with photography. So you're now photographing through multiple layers of plastic and lumps and bumps, etc. So it didn't come out very good. So um, uh, another improvement we did later was to laser cut them all out and you could actually etch, um, oh, you could etch a nice, uh, uh, information into it all, etc. So that was quite fun. Uh, this is what the looks comes back looking like. So uh, these are mainly the big ones are mainly fungus gnats. They do look a bit like mosquitoes, but they don't have a proboscis and their thigh 
uh, at, is close to the body there is quite fat and large. Um, so another innovation was uh, quickly thought, ah, let's make a 3D designer box uh, for it all, custom design. And I have maybe, uh, I don't know, 10 or 12 of these boxes now. Um, so I've got many years worth of uh, collection and I can go to each one and pull them out and have a look, photograph them again if I need to or whatever. And that's what it looks like out in the field. Um, a lot in there. So yes, we had a bit of success. So you can see that uh, when some insects go inside a flower, uh, especially orchids, it's not like a bee that uh, the bee builds up uh, tiny particles of pollen. In orchids, they mostly come as sacs and called a polliner sac. And that is sort of ripped out of the flower and gets stuck onto the back of the insect. Um, and you can see they're all different shapes. So that then says, well, okay, we've got some insects. This is actually going on out in the field there. Uh, obviously, because the flowers are getting pollinated, but uh, which it flower was this one trapped in? Which flower did this, uh, was this pollinated in, etc. So I then went and collected some different uh, flower, uh, polliner, and these are, to give you a sense of scale, I didn't put a scale on there, but these are um, toothpicks. And so you can see, this is the end of the toothpick under a microscope. It's quite, uh, quite small and just a millimetre or two, if you're lucky, just a millimetre uh, across. And uh, so we've got the top two, are, um, the top two here are um, helmet orchids. And this is a mosquito or midge orchid, and this is a snail orchid. And these are the target, uh, the, these are four orchids that are all flowering at the same time. So I thought, right, I'm into electronics. Let's get in there. And how about we photograph the flower and we'll do, we'll take, uh, do a flower, a photograph every 0.8 of a second and uh, we will get about 87,000 photos per day uh, onto a, and but to get that speed we've got to lower the resolution down to HD uh, resolution so 1920 by 1080 which is pretty good still a pretty good resolution and uh, the rig allows me to get about five flowers per year so I'll do one for a, a week or something like that sometimes Longer, sometimes shorter and uh, in 2017 I ended up with 3.2 million photographs. <laughs> why is, uh, what's the significant number there? I mean 0.8 seconds, why is 0.8 seconds? I want to get as fast as possible because I want to see the insect going inside. Yes, yeah, at, at this resolution. I could go faster by making it smaller but uh, I want to see, you know, want to be able to identify what kind of insect it is. Um, so the, the, the object here is to actually capture something going in, uh, get a photograph, hopefully with a pollen a sac on its back. So you can say that this species going in and then you'd see the flower wilt and become pollinated. Um, uh, or uh, insect going in, right, insect going in and coming out with, without a pollen a sac. Really running out of time, electronics, uh, did a lot of 3D printing for it all, laser cut, uh, made our own assembly, made the housing for it, but then how do you adjust the lens? So 3D design and printed lens. That's the rig out in the bush, camouflage so no one will <laughs> steal it. So this is the size of it all. That's the flower down there. Sorry about the people over there. That's the flower there. And that's a Raspberry Pi camera, which you know is not very big. Um, there's another target shot over there. So very tiny, that's about seven millimeters across. So results, uh, it's oh, infrared. So I can capture day, night, 24 hours a day. Uh, that's a nighttime shot at three in the morning. This is daytime because it's infrared, the colors are all muted. Uh, so the results, I'm not gonna look through 3.2 million photographs. So I use OpenCV to do motion detection but then I've got problems with storms in the middle of winter. So I need to ignore leaves that are flipping and moving in the rain, etc. That's a fungus gnat flying away. 
Um, so there's a bit of flow chart on how it all works. The results, we have uh, ants, uh, lots of ants crawling around. Uh, we've here, we've got a crane fly and a, I think that's a, a, a fly, fruit fly, <laughs> fruit fly. And there's a wasp there. Um, and this is one, a fruit fly inside. And just to show once again the size, this is the same photo, but this is the daytime shot of it all. And that's the fly inside there. So it's only a, a couple of millimeters across. Um, the results, um, not much. I haven't actually found, after one and a half years, I haven't seen anything. So I haven't actually got proof of anything going in or out. Uh, but I've got lots of interesting photographs of, it's amazing, the place just comes alive at night time or, or after I leave, just to, five minutes after I leave, everything just erupts with insects and things flying around. Monitor lots of things, profiling, tracking temperatures, etc. Uh, a number of issues, um, files in directories, uh, <laughs> um, how to delete 85,000 files. So um, you need to run, you just can't run RM, you know, in Linux to delete that number of files. Um, main costs, uh, this co the rig costs about $400 per rig. Uh, I only have one, but uh, batteries, USB flash drives. First year I couldn't afford 128 gigabyte hard drive, uh, flash drives, could only afford 64 gigabyte flash drives. Um, presented in uh, Maker, Shenzhen Maker Fair, which was fun. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for the loan of the laptop. Magic. <laughs> Can okay. I just pull that out? Uh, it's yeah. okay? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, that's the last presentation.